Hi, welcome to the Others Talker Show. I'm DV LeBron. Today, my very special guest is the mayor of Waxahachie, Mr. David Hill. How are you doing? I'm doing uh, great. Uh, uh, honored to be here with you. So, thank you for coming on again. <clears throat> I, I really do appreciate it. Unfortunately, part of this uh, uh, whole thing about being mayor is you do have to run for re-election and. Um, sometimes when you're lucky, you run unopposed, and sometimes you you got a, a challenger, and and so That's this correct. is one of those times you have a challenger, and you got to come on. So the mayor's been serving this city for over ten years in as as this capacity, but in other capacities, he's also been part of it. And um, you know, I want to thank you, mayor, for and I've told every candidate this cycle, thank you for wanting to serve your community mm -hmm. and continue to serve your community. Because uh, this is not easy, especially since it's not exactly a, a, a high paid position. You know, it, it's a stipend pretty much. So i um, very grateful that you want to serve your community. So how yeah, you the, been? The stipend is a, a T-shirt and a hat. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we don't we don't get paid. But uh, no, it's it's, it's uh, this is my sixth campaign. So uh, five of them have been contested. I've had five. This is the fifth uh, young man to run for the same seat so um you, you normally expect it uh rarely do you think you'll just uh, be unopposed uh, occasionally it happens and and you get a break but uh um, yeah it's I, I like competition definitely definitely yeah. so um for there might be some people who don't know you so just kind of give a brief about you and we'll kind of roll into stuff Okay, well, my name is David Hill. Um, I, I live in Waxahachie, obviously. I've got four children, 16 grandkids, and about 14 or 15 great-grandkids. Uh, so uh, most of them live in the city. Um, I, I was a home builder for years. Started building back in the 1970s. Uh, continued uh, when I moved here. Um, I closed my business about four years ago. Um, I didn't have time to do city council stuff and, and work at the same time. The uh, city started growing, and uh, it was going to require more time. Uh, so Mickey and I decided to um, just off the side of the house and uh, and, and devote our time uh, to uh, community service. So that's what we've kind of done. Um, I've been on city council for 10 years. I was mayor uh, for four, and then mayor pro tem one year. And most people don't know this, but uh, we have five-member council, and the mayor and mayor pro tem are elected up out of the council. So the members of council actually vote uh, for the mayor. So that's how I got here. And that's yeah. that's kind of a, a thumbnail of, of who I am and what I, what I do. Mayor, what what is the proper role of the, the Waxahachie City Council in the lives of the people of Waxahachie? Uh, well, um, most of our authority comes out of uh, uh, Austin, as you know. Uh, legislation determines what the city can do, but we do have a charter that was, uh, we chartered in 1971. Um, so all of our ordinance and everything, we, we maintain the ordinances and, um, uh, and, and approve new ordinances if, if, there's a ne uh, if they're necessary. Um, there's, there's five of us, it takes three to, to get anything passed. So, um, uh, we, uh, whatever comes to us, uh, we have our, our meetings that are open meetings to the public and we sit down and, and uh, discuss it and uh, we'll vote on whatever the issue is, uh, whether it's going to be an up vote or a down vote. So you said that the, the mayor, cause this is the mayor is, is, um, elected. The, the council has a vote for who's going to represent the city as mayor. And then you're okay. selected. Ha have you yeah. ever, have you ever or what are your thoughts on actually having the mayor in an elected position? And then have, has there ever been consideration of adding council members? Uh, we've had the, had the discussion in the past several times. Um, if you look at, we're a home rule city. Um, you have to be at least 5,000 people to be home ruled. Everybody below 5,000 is general law. Um, and there's a little difference in each, each one of those, but, um, uh, some cities have uh, seven council members, some have 11, some have, a lot of them have five. Uh, several of them uh, do the same thing that we do. We elect uh, the mayor and mayor pro tem out of the council. Others have the mayor as an elected individual. Um, and those usually have six on the council. And then the mayor is a tiebreaker. 
Uh, so um, uh, we've we've discussed that, and um, one day that they'll the, the next council will do it. We don't know when that's going to happen, but it really doesn't. I mean, it, right now we when we had five, uh, we've done that since we started in '71, and here we are, you know, 50 years later, uh, and we still seem to be managing since we're we're at large. Uh, members uh we don't have uh, precincts or areas of town that we're responsible for so the entire city is um everybody has to look out for the entire community which right. i think is a good deal uh, sometimes when you get into uh, uh precincts and zones and and seats and uh, dividing the city up um you can get into uh, some discussions that are not always pleasant and politics starts to play a role, and and it's then there's one against the other. Uh, right now, if there's if there's a need for water, every council person looks at it the same. Uh, we're not trying to figure out if we want to get it for our area of town or somebody else's area. We just know that we need to have it for the entire community. So, and, and that's the same thing on the streets and any kind of repairs that we do uh, in the city. So it has its pluses. Uh, it has some negatives to it as well. There's always pros and cons. But uh, one day, somebody, uh, I mean, it's as we continue to grow, right? Uh, you're going to have to, you, you'll have to expand the representation. Yeah, without a doubt. Now, Mayor, the how important or, you know, since you've been on in, in the last 10 years, how, how important has transparency and accountability been to you? Um, what are some of the things that you've been around that's been implemented uh, to, to provide for that for the people? Well, I, yeah, I see accountability on the sign every once in a while, and I'm trying. Uh, uh, we're we're transparent about as accountable as you can be. Uh, people come to our open meetings and uh, tell us uh, what their thoughts are, and then we have to respond to those things and uh, try to be proactive more than reactive. But uh, I think everybody on council is accountable. Uh, that they, they wouldn't be there. Uh, I mean, you have to be accountable just to get on council. You, you don't you don't all of a sudden get on council and become accountable. So uh, people know who you are before they ever cast a vote for you. So, uh, but transparency is the same thing. Uh, you always heard the same old story that, you know, a lot of deals are done behind closed doors, smoke filled rooms, things like that. And to come to find out city hall doesn't have a, a smoke filled room anywhere. And I asked when I got there. <laughs> uh, I don't smoke, but I figured, where is it? You know, I'll, I'll where's the smoke. cigar lounge? Yeah, where's but it was cigar lounge. Right. Well, you don't have that. It's um, every meeting that we have is uh, open to the public, except maybe an executive meeting where we're talking about personnel or land purchase, something like that, when we have to speak to the lawyer. But everything else, all of our committees, commissions are open commissions. All of our are open meetings. Uh, city council is open meeting. Our budget cycle that we just had last week uh, is an open meeting for people to come uh, to hear what the budget is going to be set at uh, for the next year. So this is last week we had maybe three or four people from the public that were actually there. That's better. That's, uh, that's better. But it was better than one we had the year before. Yes. That, yeah. I remember you telling me, yeah, that's better. Yeah. So there's improvement yeah. there. Um, yeah. You know, and I'm definitely going to go into budgets. If the, what in the last 10 years that you've been serving Mayor Hill, what what has been one of those toughest votes, one that that you've had a hard time with or still think about? But well, I think the toughest one that we've had in, in recent um, uh, history of recent months is really on the short term rental uh, yeah. issue uh, that's facing uh, cities all over the state of Texas and, and across the United States. It, it's seems like every city is having an issue with these things. So um, having to vote yes or no, uh, the way the ordinance is now, uh, we're doing a, a special use permit or a specific use permit uh, for each short-term rental. And, and it, so it's subjective when you start talking about these things, where are they, what do they do, and have they paid the taxes, and um, are they registered with it, uh, Airbnbs? So um, uh, that, that can get out into the weeds real quick on those discussions. And um, some people walk away happy, other people walk away sad. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't think that was the way to go. So um, 
I thought we should really just kind of uh, not allow any in single family one, two, and three residential areas. Mm -hmm. The rest of the city, you could do what you wanted to do, and the, whether it's in the central district or if it was in a commercial area, light industrial, wherever, you could do it anywhere. Uh, but right now we have we have uh, neighborhoods uh, like Main Street, uh, Bellevue uh, that don't have homeowners associations. They have no protection. Mm -hmm. uh, so now it's you can you can buy a home and uh, apply for an SUP for a short term rental. Right. But there's a several. You know, one of the critical parts is I know a lot of kids uh, that are just getting out of school that are looking for a place to rent. Uh, all the rental properties have been bought up and converted into short-term rentals. So that that reserve of rentable properties for your own people uh, is being bought up by people from outside the city, uh, outside the state, and some of them are even uh, foreign uh, in nature investment groups. So um, uh, we don't really care who buys them. The problem is they're getting bought. And, right, uh, right. and so, and then... Uh, uh, your son or whoever gets out of school and looks for a rent house can't find one. We just don't have that kind of reserve uh, of housing in the city. So, um, so those are issues. And, and how do you how do you balance that, Mayor? Like when and you personally, when you were making that decision, how do you balance uh, personal property rights and you know these things that you were saying, the different effects that come out of you know these short term rentals. Um, yeah. in, in your kind of in your thing, how did you balance that together? Well, uh, and certainly we, uh, we we honor the obviously the law and, and land rights in the state of Texas. You know, we'll, we'll fight for that. <clears throat> and some people say, that, you know, that I don't want any regulations on my land. And I'm thinking you probably didn't read your deed when you bought that property. It's, it's heavily uh, encumbered by law. And uh, you can only do some things on it, some things you can't do on it. So um, you've already, you're already, it's very litigious issue. So, uh, uh, but, but what happens if you have 20 or 30 people come out of a neighborhood and, and they express their uh, disdain for that particular property or, the, or their opposition to it, uh, if, we're, if we're not going to listen to the people, we ought to just tell them not to even show up and don't do an SUP, just let people do what they want to do, right? Right. But that's why they have homeowners associations, and most of the homeowners associations have a 90-day rental clause in their HOA. That means that a house can't be rented for less than 90 days. So that eliminates the three-day weekend short-term rental issue for that particular place. But everybody doesn't have an HOA. So... Um, I mean, if you live in an HOA, you've already got a list of what you can do and what you can't do. Your grass right. can only be two inches tall uh, and so on. So, and, you know, you know the restrictions yeah. with that. So out in the county, it's a little bit different. In the city, we have um, ordinances that, that uh, protect uh, the upkeep of the city and the cleanliness of the city. And um, so if you're in the city, you got a lot more rules than you do in the county. Yeah, but, that's uh, that's that just we look it up, but, but you have to look at all that. Uh, when one comes, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, Brad Yates brought one the other night that was up in, I think it's in the commercial area of town, uh, beautiful uh, event center up there, and, and he wanted to have some short-term rentals around the event center that he built, uh, which is perfect for what we thought uh, short-term rentals were good for. Uh, for If we're going to have tourists to come, if we're coming for an event, a wedding, or whatever it's going to be, uh, if there's an event center, then if you have some short-term rentals around it, uh, you can accommodate your your visitors to the city. Right. So um, everybody looks at it differently, uh, but but there's a general uh, one thought that goes through the city uh, councils of almost every city that has these things is how many do you need? Where are you going to allow them? And how are you going to regulate uh, what they do? Because right now Galveston just shut down 45. They didn't they didn't shut it down. They uh, said they weren't going to allow any more because the 4,500 that are on the island now, short-term rentals, 4,500. That's are, insane. Yes, it's insane. And they said that they're not paying their hot tax. We don't even know if they're paying their state tax. So that's why we've, we figured we'll do like everybody else. We'll, we'll have an ordinance. 
you'll have to come and, and get an SUP with the city and 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 you'll have to start paying your hot tax. Uh, it's a hotel motel tax um, and and your state tax. Hopefully you're already paying it. Uh, right. w- w- quite frankly, with the 80 that are here now, we don't know if they paid all their state taxes. We know that they haven't paid hot tax because we haven't received it. 80 is a lot. 80 is definitely yeah. a lot. Yeah, well, 80 is a lot of houses. And, uh, lot and those are the only stuff. ones that we're aware of. Yeah. But we don't know if we have uh, 100 or 120 or, or 200. That's uh, but we do know that some are operating that don't go through uh, uh, Airbnb or Verbo and, and the, you know, the normal uh, people that, that uh, take care of these things. And right. uh, uh, individuals are doing it themselves on Facebook or whatever. So Right. Now, do you have... Um, it's a long into, answer. Oh, I know it. I know it. Yeah. But it, it's a complex issue. Yes. Now, um, one, of, one of the things that the city council does is taxes. And um, every year you have to decide taxes and budget. I'm going to cover kind of budget, but I also want to, like in the last 10 years, um, can you tell the people kind of what you've done with taxes and kind of what your overall philosophy has been when deciding the taxes? Well, the, yeah, the tax, I mean, there's always run in the 60 cents area. Uh, when I got on, we were at 68 cents. <clears throat> we're at 61 cents now, so we've lowered it to seven seven cents uh what the city or what your average citizen doesn't probably understand is that one penny um this year with with our whatever our ad valorem tax was that we collected uh one cent is worth uh six hundred twenty three thousand dollars so every time we lower one penny on the tax rate um we we cut out that much money if if we did two cents it's over a million right so um, there were there was a cry a couple of years ago for us to go to no new revenue, which would have been six cents, and that would have been um, uh, three and a half, four million dollars that you would cut out of uh, of the ad valorem tax that we collect as a city. So to kind of put it in perspective, uh, we collect around uh, thirty six million in ad valorem tax. Um, 14 million of that is debt payment. And that leaves you uh, 22, 23, 24 million ish in there someplace, right? Right. So our police department's budget is uh, 16 million and our fire department is almost 14 million. So 16 and 14 is 30 and you only got 24. So used to, uh, we, we, we had enough out of long tax, which, which covered fire and police, but that's expanded now. Uh, to a new fire station, more employees, more demands on services, et cetera. And your ad valorem tax that you used to cover it now falls short. So you have to go into sales tax and sales tax is flexible. If if there's a, a war in, uh, between America and China or Russia or whatever happens and uh, everything's a slow boat from China again, uh, then the sales tax goes down. Uh, if there's, uh, you know, just so many things can change that that uh, revenue stream. Uh, so uh, we have to look at all that when we're uh, doing our budget. The, the uh, as you know, the the water and wastewater those are enterprise funds. So the, their rate actually pays for the maintenance and the supply of water and sewer. Right. Uh, but we can only raise that so high according to um, uh, municipal law and, and the state. So it, it's. It's a balancing act when when you start seeing that we're at fifty thousand people now. Yeah, yeah. That's and um, and the and the cry now for more stuff. Um, we want to b- build an animal service uh, facility uh, for spay and neuter, and and uh, and that's you know fifteen to twenty million dollars uh, just for something like that. People are now starting to talk about an auditorium. They want a youth center. They want pickleball courts. They want more playing fields and soccer fields for the kids. So we looked at all that stuff just the other day in our budget workshop, and that's probably 70, 80, 100 million dollars uh, worth of uh, stuff that they want now. Uh, so how do you pay for that when you're just right now, you're just paying for some basic stuff? We're doing a little bit of road repairs um, and we're, we're making sure you have water to drink. We're trying to fix the sewer uh, lines and water lines as fast as we can. but. Um, you're limited to what you can do, what services you can provide uh, with the income that we have. 
Other cities have higher tax rates. They have other higher appraisal uh, values, um, and they have other um, uh, ways of raising funds. We're limited to sales tax, pretty much, and ad valorem tax. Right. So uh, it becomes a it's it's a long debate, and we get a long list from every department of what they really do need, and then we, we sort through it and pick out what what is yeah. essential. And the rest goes on the list for next year again. Well, yeah, going into that budget thing, I know that we're in the preliminary parts of the budget, and I actually uh, plan on having uh, Mr. Scott on and kind of yeah. give some details so so that I could provide more information for the people of Waxahachie. But, you know, you're going into this, this budget. What is your priority in this year's budget? And, you know, when you approach budgets in the last 10 years, what are kind of some of the things that you've done? When approaching a budget, well, the, the priority is still uh, what it was uh, ten years ago. I mean, it's it's uh, services to the city. That's our priority as a city. That's what we do as a city. Our our, our job is quality. Quality of life is is one thing that we try to address, um, but maybe not doing. We're not able to do a whole bunch of it because we have to take care of the maintenance of the streets and your water and your wastewater and supply those services provide you with the police and fire and uh, ambulance service. So that that's what takes up most of the discussion. How are we going to do that? What What is new? What's needed? And um, uh, so that's the first thing we look at. And then everything else is just a list of stuff that everybody would like to have. So uh, we did one little pickleball, pickleball court this year. And uh, I think it was $60,000 uh, to paint over a an existing uh, uh, tennis court. Um, and now everybody's over there trying to play on it. Well, it's only one little court, right? I think mm -hmm. there's four four courts on this tennis court, uh, which is totally insufficient uh, for our community now, but uh, it still gets down to how many dollars do you have to spend? Right. So we don't want to, uh, when we did our comprehensive plan a couple of years ago, our, the guy that did it for us, I always have to tell the story to put all this in perspective. Um, they they said that we had over six hundred million dollars in street repairs that need to be done in in the city of Waxahachie. Yeah, I said next to him. He said, "I don't believe that figure is uh, correct." And I looked at him and I said, "Did you do the survey?" And he said, "No, I didn't." I said, "Do you know how many streets we have in the city?" He said, "No, I don't." Do you know how much it costs to repair a street? No, I don't. So I I said, "Well, let's just say it's three hundred million, and and not six. I, I'll give you three. We don't have 300 million. Matter of fact, just do 100 million. We'll forget. I'll give you 500 million uh, on the side, and we'll bet on the 100 million. We don't have the 100 million to do the street repairs that we'd have to do if we had to start them today. So what we find out is that we're doing seven to eight or maybe 10 million dollars in street repairs a year. We're about 20 million shy each year in uh, making this this 600 million dollars go away. So uh, the first thing we start. Obviously, you, you ask yourself, how are we going to afford to take care of that? We don't have a saving fund. We don't. You can't save money if you spend every penny you get, uh, just taking care of the basics. So um, uh, the, we start talking about density. How, right now, one acre of land uh, generates around six six hundred fifty dollars per acre in ad valorem tax. Just to maintain what we've got in the city now, it takes two thousand. If we want to get ahead, we need to have four thousand dollars worth of adverse loan tax collected on an acre of land in the city of Waxahachie. So we're only uh, thirty-four hundred dollars away from that. Uh, we're, so I mean, how do you get that? Mm -hmm. So um, some parcels of land uh, meet that need; others are woeful, uh, and, and and get even getting close. Their ag ag exemptions or whatever, are, are they don't even pay tax. Like school, uh, that's on our land in the city school district. Uh, hospitals, et cetera, churches, uh, things that that aren't uh, taxed on some of those issues. So um, it gets down to the average guys like you and I that own homes in the city and, and some of the businesses that are going to pay that uh, one day. So without raising the tax rate uh, and trying to keep it or people can say that's at least affordable uh, and it's only affordable to those that can afford to pay it. So. Uh, uh, so it's it's we, not an easy decision on, on which way to go, uh, uh, and it's like this every year. 
every year the budget like when you're when you're looking at the budget you're seeing a shortfall on roads and stuff but it, it, it you are so you know kind of i don't want to put words in your mouth but what you're I don't want to put words in your mouth, but kind of just just what I've been hearing. Um, every year you're falling behind on maintenance and and on other things in the in that budget, and you're just pretty much have enough for the bare essentials, kind of going. Well, that, that sounds a little uh, uh, sad, but uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I could have been. <laughs> so what we what we've done now, uh, we we're making adjustments. Uh, we've got a, a, a company called HA, I think it's HA5 or something like that. I'm not sure the real name. Uh, but we're going through, we're scarifying our roads rather than uh, replacing all the asphalt. I come remember back that. and roll it out smooth. In three or four years, it'll start to crack. We come back and seal it and then coat it. That gives it another five or six years of life. Uh, we've got a new product that we're going to be trying out this year uh, that Dallas is using on a lot of their streets for concrete repair, uh, which will extend the length of our concrete streets. But if you walk into um, uh, like a, a sick, not Sycamore, but uh, University Streets over here on West Marvin, uh, Ryerson and, and streets like that, that's a half a mile between Sycamore and West Marvin. If we tear the street up completely and replace it, we call it a corridor restoration. So all the utilities go in underneath it to get sidewalks on both sides, street lights and concrete curb and gutter street. Uh, that's about 3.2 to $3.6 million for that half a mile. So, and then we have hundreds of miles of streets in the city. So the good thing is the new stuff that we're doing now doesn't have to be touched for probably the next 25, 30 years, years at least. Uh, the infrastructure we're putting in there now is not brown clay pipe and things that we dug up from 1927. So just by the fact that we're putting in new material extends the whole life of that entire roadbed uh, on the top and the bottom, everything underneath it. So those, you can set them out at 50 years now. What we're still looking at, we have streets here that, that were still have the stencil in the curb that says 1926 and 27. So that's how long they've been there and they've never been replaced or, and the utilities underneath them are now starting to, uh, they're beyond their life. And uh, they're starting to shoot up to the uh, neighbor's yard or whatever with water and stuff. So. Before uh, I start moving, before I start moving uh, forward, um, in in let's say you're reelected onto this next term, what are some of that priorities when it comes to the budget and and you know maybe even the roads in there? Since you talked that infrastructure, and you know in this next term, what would you like to see done with that before I move forward? Well, I think we we've got a five year uh, plan, um, you know, capital M plan for the city. And uh, this year we've got several million dollars worth of streets. Next year we've got several million dollars worth of streets. So it's already projected out five and 10 years. Uh, so we don't have to, uh, unless we have an emergency of something like that that we have to take care of, uh, we're gonna stick with our plan that, that we went out and we, we surveyed all of our streets uh, several years ago. Uh, and they all have a little code that says, this, this has got five years of life left in it. Uh, this one's got 10, this one has one, this, was, this one's dead. And it needs to be uh, redone. So the ones that are that are um, uh, in, in dire need, um, those are at the first of the list, and that's how we work the system through. Um, it'd be nice if we'd, somebody called and said, "You know, my street's got a bump in it. Y'all come fix it." Um, but right now, we're just trying to figure out uh, which ones are going to cost three and five million dollars to fix. Right. So uh, we started out in Bellevue a few years ago, uh, and I, we've talked about this several years. It was a five-year plan. I think we're into year six. I remember, yeah. And we still got uh, three streets to go, but um, hopefully we'll get those done in the next two or three years. And then every street in Bellevue that was built in 1940, uh, right after the war, 42, 43, 44, and 45, um, we'll have all storm drains, street lights, sidewalks, concrete roads. Um, and, and they've never seen concrete roads. So, uh, but that's one subdivision that will be totally refinished yeah and then we have others that we're looking at the same way so but it, it it's it's not uh, it kevin strank used to say dave we have to eat meat and potatoes for a long time we'll get dessert later and uh, what he meant by that is the dessert is going to be uh uh the natatoriums and things like that public swimming pools and and some of the expansion on our parks 
Uh, it, we, we still do parks as as we're going, but but we're not able to really to hit it 100 percent and do what we want to do until we get the infrastructure to where it's stabilized. And and I tell everybody that gets on city council, if you if you're coming for a couple of years, you're going to be gravely disappointed. Uh, if you plan to stay a while, then you'll get to see some of the stuff and and work through that process. And uh, but it's it's a it's intense. It's intense. It's, there's it's, so it's much. Lot, I don't know. There's so much more to it than just. Um, voting no it, it is very, night. i if you're doing it right there's so much that goes into uh, um uh, going running a city and and you know making sure that everything is is provided now one of the things that you know obviously is affected in the last 10 years is growth i know you've seen this place blow up yep. um and now we're at you know i, I forgot what number was 40,000 or almost 50,000 almost 50 yeah almost 50,000 yeah. people in this city yep. um how would you like going forward you know if you're reelected what were some of the things you'd like to be do with with dealing with growth well that's another long story uh, yeah, but don't, don't go know. too long <laughs> don't go too long well, you uh and everybody knows uh everybody knows um 77 ferris all that all the traffic that we have mm -hmm. uh, we've always been trying to get everything to the uh, west side of i-35 so just in the last four or five years we've been making uh water and uh and sewer available to get it over to that side uh, so that we can start our development uh, over there and, and shift some of the load of our retail off of 77. What we know uh, through demographics and analytics that all of our, our businesses bring to us when they come to Walk Statue to start a business or to talk to us about a business, uh, we found out through showbiz that 72% of their sales tax comes from outside the city limits. So um, they're able to tell uh, who left their house in, in Maypearl and came to showbiz. Uh, they bought three tickets for three shows on Saturday. It tracks that car and it goes to a restaurant. They eat lunch, then they go to Walmart or wherever they're gonna buy um, uh, Academy and you know buy gels and stuff for a duck season. But then they go back to the show, they watch another show, then they go by to HEB and uh, buy the grocery and then they go home. So all the traffic that you see uh, between uh, North Grove, I guess in Sycamore, uh, on 77, about half of that traffic uh, is not residents of Waxahachie. We still have the same transfer of labor coming in and out of the city. 11 or 12,000 come in to work every day, 13, 15,000 go out of the city to work up in Dallas. So uh, there's a lot of car movement uh, during the day, um, but I still shop at HEB. I'm a patient guy. Uh, but you can buy green bananas at one end of it, and when you check out, they're yellow, right? I mean, it, it takes a while yes. to, to get through there, but but uh, uh, we have Tom Thumb coming, which will relieve some of that pressure, not all of it, uh, so that the people up on the north side will at least have a grocery that's closer and uh, maybe easier to get into. So it, it's uh, 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 we're going to continue to to grow. In, in the state of Texas, if you own the land, you have the right to develop the land. So when, when projects come to the city, the only thing that will ever stop growth in the city is going to be if we have the ability to provide um, utilities. That's right. water, wastewater, and, and uh, sewer, right? Uh, gas and, and everything else that goes along with that. So uh, right now we're, we're good on, on our utilities. We have plenty of water for uh, our, our, uh, our future and um, wastewater. We're thinking maybe by 2030. Which another six years we'll have to, to uh, either start engineering or we'll have to start building a, a new wastewater treatment plant so we've got about six years in that the older um, plant that we have now uh, so that's that's a few million dollars for that kind of investment but it's going to be necessary to do that yeah yeah so you look at the roads it is is uh, what we're talking about and and everybody thinks that we don't own any of the streets that have a traffic light that all belongs to text dot we don't have control over the phasing of the traffic. Uh, that's text Uh When we get on the, uh, I think we have to have, have 50,000 people on the census. Uh, and when that happens, they'll turn the control of those con uh, lights over to the city and the maintenance. So then we'll have control of that if we want to uh, rephase so the, ro the, the roads will become the cities. 
Well, the road doesn't, but the traffic lights do. Okay, the traffic yeah, they, lights. And they don't give us any money to do that with. They, well, it's of unfunded not. mandate, of course. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but it's, uh, you talk, when we were talking about the tax rate, here's, you know, last year the, the legislature passed a law and they, uh, not a law, but they uh, decided to buy down the, the school's tax rate with $18 billion, $18 billion, right? They had $32 billion in reserves and they said, we'll, we'll take half of that and buy down the school taxes, which was a good deal for, for everybody overall. Uh, but you know how they, what, you know whose money it was that they used to buy that down with? They it was yours. Yeah. It was tax money. Well, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> they don't make money. They don't make, they don't make money. money in Austin. They just right. take our money and they spend our money. So, and then they call us and tell us that our appraisals uh, are not high enough in, uh, in the city of Waxahachie. So uh, we're fighting the fight to, re- to lower the tax rate to make living here affordable. And the state is helping uh, to buy down the tax rate with our tax money for the schools, but they can't buy our, they, they don't give us any money to buy ours down. Uh, they just give us unfunded mandate. Everything right. that they want us to do, they say, we don't have any money for that. You don't have to pay for it yourself. Right. So uh, I, I think it's a shell game. And I told my senator that he didn't think it was a shell game, but I said, obviously you don't know what a shell game is. Yet. Yeah. So anyway, it, we fight that fight uh, all the time. And, um, uh, when people come to the city hall and, and they're saying they're being taxed out of their homes, uh, we all have homes and we wouldn't want that for ourselves. And, and uh, so we, we work hard and that's all five council members. That's not just me. Everybody that gets there says the same thing. How do we, how do we help the people of Waxahachie uh, stay in their homes and not be taxed out of their houses? Well, so it's, 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 it's a concerted effort. It, it helps when, you know, the public does, care or or at least pay attention because you know the city is the city is is one of three of the taxing entities that hit your bill folks yep. and the school is the largest part and you know people don't pay attention to school board elections and they're very yeah. important they affect yeah. you so mayor the last question before i give you the mic um, can you speak real quick on the as far as the last 10 years and and going forward ha, do you think that we're handling um, are we being business friendly in the city of Waxahachie? How could we improve on that? Well, I think uh, uh, we're uh, we're in, uh, still in our infancy stage, in my mind, as a city that's maturing. Uh, so, uh, do you think it'll be like this all of our lives? No. I mean, in in the next few years, um, things will change. There'll be new employees that will come through, uh, new ideas. The city will grow. Um, I got a phone call from a young man <clears throat> a couple months ago and he was upset uh, with the city over an issue. And, um, he asked if he could meet with me. So I went and met with him. We talked for a couple of hours at his uh, place of business. And, um, he said that they're, they're requiring me to put a sidewalk in on my new development and there's no sidewalks within a mile of either side of me. Why do I have to do that? It's going to cost me a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars to do it. And it's outrageous. So I said, uh, uh, let me go and, and talk and see what the deal is. I went and checked on it. And uh, I, I asked staff, if, if can't we do a variance on that and not mandate that this fellow has to go to that expense? Is there something else we can do? Mm-hmm. And everybody finally said, well, there's nobody within miles of him. Chances of anybody walking on his section of the sidewalk is slim. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll do a waiver. So I went. And I, I told him he's got a waiver. He doesn't have to to do the thing. And he said, thank you. Uh, and about a month later, it happened to be, it was uh, the fellow that's running against me uh, that decided to run uh, uh, for city council. Right. So, uh, so uh, it, uh, you never know what's going to happen, right? Uh, you don't ask those questions up front. You simply, um, if someone calls uh, and they need an issue handled, uh, that's what we do. We go out and try to uh, make sure that uh, everything is fair for all mm-hmm. people concerned. So, um, but I know that th- there's, I've got the report. I just looked at it uh, from the building department uh, and they tell me on there how many permits have been issued and, and what percentage of them were done in the three weeks that we've allowed them to have. That was our goal that in three weeks, can you get a permit applied for and out of there 
And um, of the 2,200 or so uh, permits issued, uh, they're at 99.99%. So that means maybe one or two either weren't, uh, you, you, I, I don't know why the other one or two weren't uh, out in three weeks. But uh, when I hear that, that our building department is not doing this or doing that, I always check on it. And, um, and there's always a reason for it. Right. So somebody's right. Somebody is not sure of everything that's going on. So, well, you know what? This is the part where I shut up and give you the mic to speak directly to the voters. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and be quiet. Can you uh, go ahead and talk to the people? Uh, again, well, my name is David Hill again. And of course, the election um, early voting starts on the 22nd of this month, which is just a few days away. And of course, election day is May the 4th. I've served for uh, 10 years and I greatly appreciate it. It's been my honor to serve on city council. I think I've, I've, uh, I've been very productive in, in what we've done of working with uh, the other members on city council. Um, and I've, I'm invested in the community. Obviously, I've got uh, my children that live here. They're uh, teachers and uh, nurses. I've got grandkids that are nurses and teachers and our great grandkids that, that are uh, already 13 and 14 years old, which is kind of scary. So um, I, I would like to... Uh, continue my service to the community and if you'll uh, come out um uh, starting uh, monday and uh, for early voting i would greatly appreciate your support and your vote thank you a lot Davey, for letting me come on tonight oh no thank you so much for coming on mayor you know i appreciate it. every time you come on I, I get a little bit smarter you may get a little dumber from me but i get <laughs> i get smarter from you i learn a lot of things and um i look forward to having my interview with uh, mr scott and just kind of going into a lot of those day-to-day -day nut, nut and bolts that way yeah. they could, uh, it, it could put context on this budget that you're going into. Um, well, you know, I appreciate you coming on again. Uh, can you stick around after the show real quick? Absolutely. Sure. Thank you.